Kenwood. Hello everybody. Uh, second session about Kairos. We'll discuss today about DMR TA3. Stephen, can you please describe a bit what exactly do we need for a DMR TA3 site? Hi Gabby and hello to everyone. And yes, uh, as you can see here on the table, we have two Kairos base stations uh, and they're connected together with a very simple little uh, netlink switch here and a couple of dummy loads, a couple of antennas and that is actually a tier 3 trunking system. There is no central controller. Uh, all of the central functionality within the TSC, trunk and site controller, is within the Kairos product and uh, it's all basically a, a software configuration. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit of how, how the configuration goes together, Gabby. Yeah, it's very, very simple this time. So first we have to prepare the details about the sites and the, the system. Being a single site, we have two repeaters, so we have to make a very nice list, as you will see on, uh, on computer, about the network name, site name, carrier name, and so on, because most of the settings are the same for both repeaters. Just a very, very straightforward configuration. Okay, and is that something which you do with a PC, or can you do that with a web browser? How does that work? Yes, we have to do it in parallel. Once you have the list, the, the list of configuration, then you only have, as you see on the, on the screen, you only have to fill in the channels, the frequencies. Then to define the role of each repeater, one will be probably master, uh, the other one will be, the second repeater will be the extra channel. As you know, in DMR we are using the pay, uh, payload channels, the terminology. So for this specific con configuration, we can have one control channel and three traffic channels. So all one control channel and three payload channels. Okay, so I think in this particular system, what that gives us is the ability for uh, the one main standby, uh, main Kairos unit, and that has the trunking function in it, as well as a voice function. And then we have a second uh, repeater, which also has a standby trunking control site in it, and that then has normally two voice channels. But if the other one fails, then that takes over. Perfect. Yes, it's the it's a fully redundant system, in in exactly the manner you have described it a bit earlier. So with that, if you only have the need for one carrier, so one control channel and one voice, can you do that? Oh, of course. So in this case, we're going to have one repeater which will uh, work in the MRT3 mode, one time slot will be used for control channel, the other one will be used for voice communication. As simple as that. Okay. So yeah. that also makes it very easy to grow the system then because uh, I'm assuming when you have one Kairos that is set up, you can then add another one and another one as you build more and more radios on your fleet. Exactly. So just continuing the, uh, our uh, configuration for this specific scenario. First repeater will, will act as a control channel and payload channel. The second one will be for traffic channels only or payload channels. And on first repeater we have to define the PAR A or B. Right. That's very specific to DMR. Yes, that's part of the protocol I believe. Exactly. Yes. And uh, the base frequency, that's also something new. For those which work on MPT, probably is not new at all. No, that's, that's a, a very um, traditional thing on MPT. You have to set a base frequency and then all the channels are from that. But of course with DMR you have far more channels, so it's a larger area as well. Uh, it's not the restricted thousand channels that you had with MPT. Once the configuration is done in uh, Kairos Manager, then we go online, on web browser, to mm -hmm. define the controller. And it's straightforward, as you see on the on the screen. Mm -hmm. Define exactly the same parameters from uh, uh, repeaters in the site controller, and after that, uh, we'll do a, a physical restart, and the site is up and running. Okay, this all sounds like it might be a little bit intimidating for someone who's not come across Tier Three or MPT. Is there a sort of quick start way that you can do this to get a configuration working quickly and easily? That's a very good question. Yes, we we have prepared that uh, 
JK UK office, JVC Canut office. We are preparing some templates, depends on your configuration. So all you have to do is to update the firmware to be sure that you are using the last one, load the typical configuration which we are uh, delivering to you, then you have to adjust maybe the frequency and you have the first set of data up and running. So it's easy as that. So it's just a matter of loading files into the Kairos and configuring the, the same files within the terminals and switching it on and it will come up and work. And yes. you can then modify that configuration to be specific for your Ofcom licenses and powers and all those sort of things. Absolutely correct. Right, um, can you describe now a bit uh, radio side? Okay, the radio How side. How to program the radios in the MR tier 3? Well, the radios are actually quite simple. Uh, with tier 3, it is uh, not dissimilar to the way that MPT worked. So when the transmitter uh, is active, it's transmitting a forward control channel. So uh, if you remember the old chirping sound that you got from MPT, well, this is a digital version of that. And on that, so when you first switch your radio on from cold and the radio powers up, it searches around on a list of uh, channels for the active control channel. Once it finds the active control channel, which this one has already done, then it will log on to that channel. The system will check if the radio is entitled to be on the system. There's, it's not quite the same as MPT. Uh, it's a little more versatile in DMR, but there is a key which is checked, which is specific to each radio, uh, although you can make it global as well. And once you're logged on, then you have the same as with MPT, where you have a little bar graph telling you you've got full signal strength. And from this, you typically would work with different group calls. So on here, we have a line of group calls. So if I am on group 101, and all I simply do is push the PTT button, and you'll see on here the other radio becomes testing, active. Testing, testing, want to testing? Radio engineers radio test. Engineers test. And when I push the end key button, you'll recognize that sound as it sounds just like MPT, which if you don't like that, you can switch it off. But it's actually quite, uh, I think, quite nice to have something to start the call and end the call because it is message trunking in the same way as MPT is. So once I push the button here to request a call and the call sets up, I have got that channel for the whole duration of my call. No one else can break in. And when I end it, I then release that resource that goes back for other people to use. Perfect, yes. And in the, in the same manner, just because the, the features look very complicated, but they're not, in fact, we made the same templates for radios, yes. am I right? Yes, absolutely. So you can just load a template in, which will have the same frequencies as in the Kairos. So there is nothing else to do other than uh, program some radios. So provided you've got uh, an NX3000 series or one of the other supported radios, then you can just put that code in. As it comes in, it will then log on to the system and you can then look at that and modify it for exactly what you require, which makes life easy. It's much, much easier. And uh, uh, the way that the infrastructure works is you can go in with a browser and can you perhaps tell us a little bit more about what you actually get from the browser interaction? Well, that's also a very, very good, very nice feature. In fact, being a browser, you don't have to worry about if it's a Windows PC or Linux or Mac or tablet or anything else. You just type in the address of the system controller or site controller, then log in and you have a very nice uh, picture of the site or of the network, the entire network, in fact and we'll see exactly which is the control channel, the traffic channels, and uh, then you can monitor the status, the real life status of the network. If, I think we've yeah. actually got a couple on the uh, PC here, and we'll put those into the video so as you can see exactly what we're talking about, because it certainly is a, a, a makes life very, very easy. Oh, definitely, yes. We can see the call logs, and you can get audio from live audio from the control channel from traffic channels you can see even the co the position of the mobile on the map yeah i, th I do think that's a lovely feature useful. where if your useful. radios are gps equipped yeah. you can just 
map the radio. So if someone says they're having a problem with coverage, you actually know where they are. Perfect, yeah. So you can send a short message to the specific radio or to a group from the console. So everything is on web-based application. Yeah, I think that that is a big leap forward because it means that as a service engineer, you can access it from anywhere in the world. So if there's a problem and you know, you're not in the office, you're not by a PC, you can even do this with your phone. Yeah, it's absolutely correct. It's mm. so easy. If you can get alarms from site, then you just log in on the, in the network and monitor the status and the health and fix the problem, if any. OK, sounds perfect, really. DMR tier 3 is also extremely, extremely flexible. I know this is a, just a DMR tier 3, a single side. But if we have two sides, can we combine them in a multi-frequency network? Yes, oh. that's one of the great things about it is you can easily combine multiple sites. So you can have a, a stack of repeaters on one frequency, uh, one bank of frequencies and then onto another one. Uh, and I think also you can vote the system as well. And for those not familiar with voting, perhaps you can give a quick overview of how that would work. Yes, but that's a very nice configuration in fact. Imagine um, big cities which require very good coverage and good handover and you know typical uh, advantage of a simulcast network. You can cover that, uh, that city with a network of uh, DMR tier 3 in simulcast. They're all connected together, same set of frequencies. Then those cities, they can be connected together in, into a multi-frequency network in a mixed mode, all running in the same network, DMR tier 3. That does certainly sound very interesting because obviously one of the problems with all trunk systems is the group usage where people from a group are on lots of sites and obviously uh, each site would then allocate a channel but if it's a simulcast system then that same channel is allocated on all of them minimizing your use of resource Definitely, yes. and the cost of your licensing. Definitely yes, yes. And the efficiency com combining this uh, a very good advantage with the efficiency of uh, multi-site, multi multi-frequency site. That means we have um, group registration in different network. Then we make the network extremely, extremely efficient. Okay. So I think that's probably enough for today because yeah. I think we've covered an awful lot of uh, information. Uh, one of the important things with the Kairos product is that uh, we have an awful lot of documentation on this and there are a lot of concepts. Uh, so if people uh, would like to contact us directly to Gabby or myself, we'll happily talk you through your specific requirements. Or failing that, you can go onto the website and uh, with the uh, address that you can see on screen now, uh, download a lot of information about the product. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Kenwood.